Well, my friends, the wind is howling, the leaves are a-changing, and we are truly into spooky season. So what better time than to regale you with a classic Nintendo 64 urban legend? This is a story that has been floating around on game FAQs and YouTube comments and other places for the better part of 20 years. And you might think, some spooky story about a video game told by some teenager in the early years of the internet. Yeah, right. And I wouldn't blame you. Surely looking at this through any skeptical lens would disprove it pretty quickly. And usually you'd be right. But in this rare instance, the more closely we look at the alleged story, the closer we might come to a very real and stunning explanation which could impact the way Perfect Dark is played for all of eternity. This is the story of Perfect Dark's Chicago Ghost. I will present to you in original text, the most well-documented account of this urban legend, a thread called the Perfect Dark Ghost Was Real, posted by a now deleted Reddit user to r slash easter eggs in May 2016. <clears throat> I am writing this for one reason and one reason only. I experienced something during my childhood that apparently the internet thinks was based upon lies and rumors. I want to come forward and clear the air, and tell you with 100% certainty that the Chicago ghost in the game Perfect Dark was real. I would also like to state that I have no reason to come forward and lie about the story that I'm about to tell you all. I'm doing this because I remembered it, and after looking it up on the internet earlier today, found that the internet still, to this day, thinks that people were lying about the Perfect Dark ghost. I don't remember the exact year that this happened, but I know it was roughly around 2001 or 2002 when the game Perfect Dark was still a big deal and Halo 1 had only just been released. I stopped playing Perfect Dark for Halo, which is why I recall this. I was staying at a friend's house, which I would often do so that I could play video games. And at the time, the only two games that we had to play were either StarCraft or Perfect Dark. Typically, we would play Perfect Dark together. On the day that I'm going to tell you about, however, we were doing a Perfect Agent Marathon. In other words, we would take turns playing on Perfect Agent, and when one of us dies, we would hand over the controller so the other can attempt. On the Chicago Stealth level, we encountered the Chicago Ghost. It all happened shortly after beginning the level. I made my way forward, taking out the first guy silently. Everything was a pretty typical run. I had spent literally months playing the game, so I knew it inside and out. However, something strange happened when I neared the Gentleman's Club area. For those of you who have played this game, you will know what I'm talking about, and for everyone else, a simple search on YouTube will yield you the proper results. The Gentleman's Club, also called the Punk Pond, was kind of a small easter egg in the game. It was an area that normally was not accessible to players, in fact the only way to enter it was to shoot at the door and aggro an NPC on the other side, who you normally could not fight, to come and open the door. I knew about this because I had already discovered it by accident many months beforehand. To my surprise though, I heard gunshots below me when I passed by the club. This meant that something was happening within the club itself. Perplexed, I entered the main entrance and went down the steps. This is when the truly strange stuff started to go down. The door, which, as I've stated already, was not designed to be opened by the player, was somehow already opened. And stranger yet, two guards were dead on the ground next to it. I had never encountered this before, and so I quickly went inside without really thinking about it. I seriously have a life regret that I did not enter that room more slowly. Inside, I found another body laying there on the ground, but saw no one else. Just as I looked up, I heard the zap of a cloaking device, which meant that someone was invisible, and then saw cross-bolt darts flying past me. I couldn't do anything, the darts hit me and killed me instantly. I remember thinking to myself, please, please let the camera wheel around during the death animation so I could see who killed me, yet it did not. 
I hit the ground and the screen turned black. Mission over. We spent the next few days trying to reenact what had happened, even going as far as to perfectly replicate our footsteps during previous levels to try and re-trigger the event. It never happened, and we soon gave up and eventually moved on to other games. Now, many years later, I randomly remembered what had happened. I decided earlier today to Google it so that I could see how the event had been triggered. I became furious by what I had found. It seems that other people had encountered this ghost too, but everyone on the internet were treating it as rumors or lies. It was not a lie. I am standing here now with no other motives than to tell you that the Perfect Dark Ghost was real. I encountered it, period. Thank you all for reading, and now a part of me can move on with my life. The deleted user, who we'll call by the name Krivik from this point on, also adds in a postscript update, sharing his theory that this could be a secret Easter egg programmed into the game as a rare encounter, and that there are other seemingly insane sounding glitches in other games which no one would believe were it not for video evidence proving them. So why not this one? Now, I first came across this story in June 2020, when a YouTube viewer linked me this thread in the comments of another video. Mysteries from old games are always something that I find intriguing, and so I put this out there to the rest of the Perfect Dark Elite community to see if anyone had experienced or heard about something similar. And, as you might expect, a handful wrote back suggesting that this sounds like a typical made-up childhood memory, or a typical Mandela Effect misremembered event. However, one very interesting response came from a longtime Perfect Dark player, past champion, and computer scientist, Your Eliteness. This is a guy who knows coding and programming better than anyone else I would know. And he wrote this. The rumor was also floating around on game FAQs shortly after the game was released. One of the PD developers stated that no such ghost exists, or at least it wasn't intentionally programmed into the game. It's theoretically possible that some obscure memory bug could cause strange things to happen, such as this. I actually think there might be some truth to this guy's claim. The rumors on game FAQs from almost 20 years ago had the same description. Chicago, crossbow, and cloak in the bar area. Plus, there's little reason for him to lie about this. And I do think that last sentiment is true. It's one thing to lie about having a world record, or lie about something for financial gain, but to post a story to Reddit for nine upvotes, which had been repeated a number of times on game FAQs to a handful of replies, I think it does add legitimacy to the claim. Legitimacy in that the writer at least believed he experienced the perfect dark ghost, whether he did or not. So let's take a look at some of the even older posts referencing the Chicago ghost to glean an understanding of how this was reported on or recorded long ago. Perhaps the most ancient reference to the ghost I found is this one, a 2000s era looking fan site for Perfect Dark, last archived in 2006, in what purports to be some kind of Perfect Dark Q&A. I've heard that in Perfect Dark there is a ghost enemy, is that true? And if not, why did I pass away when I had left a multiplayer game on overnight with no other players and sims? When I woke up, the screen said, press start. I've been surfing the net recently and I found rumors of a certain ghost in Perfect Dark, N64. One of these things was of one individual who was playing on the Chicago level. He was going down into the pond punk bar when he heard screams. He got down the stairs, the doors were open, which they usually aren't, he went inside and found three dead bodies on the floor with crossbow bolts in them. He was just about to run like heck when all of a sudden, he too was shot with a crossbow and died instantly. Other reports on this ghost are that he is the ghost of none other than James Bond 007, who is seeking out revenge on Joanna for taking his place in the limelight. Are these rumors, sightings, and reports true? If they are, please tell me because it's scaring the heck out of me. I mean, alright, I wouldn't say I'm exactly jumping out of my skin in fright, but it is at least a little unsettling. 
if you can just get pwned at any moment in-game from some random ghost. And Punk Pond? Pond? Punk? I think Punk Pond sounds better, so I'm gonna go with that from here on out. In August 2009, on the Game of Thieves Perfect Dark board, one user, Mothballs, made a thread. Remember Ghost? And writes, I sure do. That was fun. Did we ever figure that out? Wacky programming or something? Siravam responds, Do you mean the one ghost that goes around killing everything with the crossbow before coming for you? To which Mothball clarifies, Crossbow ghost, he worked for you. People were dead before you got there. This is interesting because it does somewhat align with Krivik's original account, at least in so much as the crossbow wielding ghost being purported to shoot other guards, but not so much as in the ghost ended up killing Krivik as per his account. So it doesn't quite work for you, though I can understand the misconception. But could this have been a separate encounter with the Chicago ghost? In a thread from March 2010, around the time of the re-release Perfect Dark for Xbox 360, a user, DarkMayan23, writes, The ghost. Do you think he or she will still make appearances in this new version? Davey0110 writes, I for one don't believe in the PD ghost. And then also, In this age of YouTube, we might finally have some proof of the ghost. Ah uh, yes, if only. Dark Mayan 23 then writes more specifically about his encounter with the ghost. I never believed in the ghost either, but I finally encountered it once for sure, possibly another time or two. For those who have never heard of it, the ghost was an invisible simulant that would sometimes appear and kill people with the crossbow. I don't remember the lore precisely, but in my case, it was obvious that it existed because I was playing the G5 building level with no crossbows, and my friend and I repeatedly died from insanely accurate crossbow fire. Many people don't believe in it because it was an exceedingly rare occurrence. After hundreds of hours of playing Perfect Dark, I only saw it for certain one time. Interestingly, Dark Mine experiences on a different level from Krithik, the G5 building, so perhaps the ghost should be better referred to as the Perfect Dark Ghost, or maybe just the ghost in the context of this video. But it is worth pointing out that these stages are the two stages of Mission 3, G5 building, where you begin on the streets of Chicago, and then enter the G5 building. Is that something that matters? Perhaps we'll find out. Crazy Fox 609 replies, I'm pretty sure I encountered it once. We did some crazy setups though, don't really remember all that well. Well, what exactly could these setups be? In a thread from January 2008, SF Shadow X writes, Try this. On Combat Simulator, try to put infinite time and no sim. Then play a load on any stage and leave the game on all night. Wake up in the morning, and sometimes you will be dead. Miller's C says, Try recording it next time. To which SF Shadow X replies, LOL 8 hour video. And to be fair, that would indeed be a concern back in the year 2008. And in this YouTube comment from a video called Perfect Dark Secrets and Easter Eggs from 2013, a commenter mentions something about the ghost of James Bond in Area 51. And Krithik has made mention that he'd often see other similar comments scattered across various other Perfect Dark videos over the last decade. So that's the gist of the ghost, at least from a handful of game FAQ threads and YouTube comments here and there. Sure, it still sounds a bit urban legend-like, however, keep a few things in mind. Crazy Fox and SF Shadow X both mentioned something about a setup. For example, playing Combat Simulator with infinite time and no simulants. Dark Mayan and Krithik both mentioned a cloak, Crossbow Wielding Guard, both on levels where there are no Crossbow Wielding Guards. So there are some consistencies beginning to form. Do these speak at all to this legend's credibility? But perhaps the most credible indication that Krithik actually believes he encountered the ghost was his indefatigable pursuit of answers to this question.
In the following years, Krithik kept searching far and wide for anyone who could vouch for his sighting, parsing through game FAQs threads, contacting YouTubers who might be interested in signal boosting the story, getting in touch with developers of the game. A very compelling lead came from Krithik's conversation on LinkedIn with Perfect Arc lead programmer Mark Edmonds. In that conversation, Mark Edmonds makes mention about how there were two versions of Perfect Dark released. The first version, 1.0, had a bug where loading one of the challenges in the three-player mode would cause the game to crash. As he describes, some bit of code was writing over some other random piece of memory that it shouldn't have been. It was causing the crash only on that three-player challenge level, but it could have been writing over other bits of memory when starting challenges without causing a crash, and I have no idea what it could have been writing over. So if you played Perfect Arc version 1.0, there could be some really odd stuff occurring very occasionally, but I have no idea what kind of things, or how you would trigger them, or how to reproduce them. So that's pretty crazy, right? That the lead programmer of the game seems to believe that the ghost might be at least technically possible to encounter, or at least some wacky things might be encountered in version 1.0 of the game. That goes a long way to giving this urban legend some real credibility. Edmonds goes on to describe how Nintendo only made so many of the 1.0 cartridges just enough to make the first batch of games to make release date, and then all subsequent carts used version 1.1 with the fixed memory bug. So now I know what you're thinking, the natural next step is to plug in a 1.0 cartridge and try messing around to find yourself. So if right about now you're going to rummage through your attic or closet in hopes of finding your old N64 in Perfect Dark, how can you tell which cartridge is which? Well, it's actually quite easy, which is nice, and not the case for every N64 game. You see this stamp on the back of the cartridge? If it's two digits plus the letter A, tough luck, that's a version 1.1. If it's two digits and just that, you're in luck, that's a version 1.0. My cart says 19 on the back, so bingo bango, we're in luck, let's fire it up. Another way to tell the version of your game, since the back label might be worn or swapped out, is by playing the crash site cutscene, either by beating the level or from this menu here. If Trent, this bloke wearing a red suit, appears in the cutscene, that's version 1.1. If he does not appear and is invisible the whole cutscene, that's version 1.0. This seems to be a bug too, as, I mean, the Mr. Blonde Scudder passes Trent away at the end of the cutscene, so it makes no sense for Trent not to appear visually. So what are we going to try? Well, by all accounts, it seems that by going into the combat simulator or the challenges menu and messing around in there before heading off to play some missions is at least what a couple of old accounts seem to have claimed. So let's give that a shot. The first thing I tried was setting up a combat simulator with zero sims and infinite time limit, similar to SF Shadow X's account from 2008. I strafed around for about a minute, then quit out. I then went into a level where I knew the first room would have no guards, Pelagic 2. I left the game on all night and came back the next day, nine hours later, and was still alive and well in the first room. So that was a bust. The next day I tried going into Combat Simulator and setting up a game with some simulants. The whole Zero Sims thing Shadow X wrote just felt wrong logically. Like if a guard was going to memory leak in from the combat simulator into the solo missions, you'd imagine he would have to be loaded into the combat simulator first. So I added in four simulants and chose the weapons to be the crossbow and cloaking devices. I mean, that seems logical, right? Then I figure I'd go into the Chicago mission, make my way to the Punk Pond hidden club and... Nothing. I left the game on for about an hour and nothing. And I don't really think if I left it on all night, much would have happened either. By all accounts, these things happen pretty quickly once you're in the mission. There is this one guard who seems to spawn in the club area, and when you disarm him, he just runs back and forth endlessly. Interesting, but definitely not the ghost. 
I tried this again the subsequent night to the same result. Uh, and so yeah, that's pretty much as far as I got with this. It's, uh, it's 3 a.m. Waiting for the ghost to show up, and uh, it's not happening. Uh, we just crossed the five-hour mark here on screen, and uh, still no sign of the ghost. I don't know, guys. It's starting to get... Now, based on everything I know, here's what I do believe. I really do believe that this ghost can be encountered in the game. I think there's a very particular set of settings, simulants, etc., which must be met to affect the memory in the correct way. And if this happens, then a simulant from your combat sim or challenge mode, a mode where simulated enemies hunt you down with any variety of settings and equipment as you set up, as well as hunting down the other sims in the area, I think those simulants can then leak into these solo mission stages. That's what I really think can happen, and is happening, in these Tales of the Ghost. Not only this, but I only tried in the combat simulation mode, which a couple of the early rumor posts suggested, but I never tried loading the challenges and then going into the missions, which some of the other accounts of early rumors suggest. You know, there's 30 challenges, it just seems like way too much of a shot in the dark uh, to get lucky and hit the right broken challenge. Even so, perhaps I didn't leave on the combat simulation for long enough for the memory to overflow in such a way that the ghost simulant then leaks into the solo missions. Everything just adds up in all the right ways. I truly want to believe this is possible and will be encountered on video someday. And you know, when you think about the way you might have been playing Perfect Dark back in the day, it makes sense why it's been claimed to have been countered many times back then, but never in more recent times. Imagine playing in the year 2000. You might leave the N64 on all day long, play some challenges, play some combat sim with your brother, play some solo missions, go back to challenges, and so on and so forth. And by hour 14 or whatever of the console being on, there's a reasonable chance you might have hit all the prerequisites to get the memory to overflow in such a way to spawn the ghost. I'm confident that if streaming were around in the year 2000, we would probably have seen someone playing Perfect Dark all day eventually encounter the ghost. On video, full proof, no questions asked. Most people still playing the game today speedrun the solo missions and don't really touch the challenges or combat sim, which can explain the lack of encounters more recently. You're less likely to fool around with the whole game, playing with all the settings in all of the game modes, and are just more likely to spend 8 hours grinding out a single level speedrun in today's World of Perfect Dark gameplay. Krithik made a follow-up Reddit post last year, which sums up where the search for the Chicago Ghost stands as it is today. Encountered a crossbow-wielding, cloaked lunatic in Perfect Dark. Got wrecked by it, got butthurt about it for 20 years, other people saw it, no one believes us, no one has ever proven it. Mark Edmonds, lead developer of Perfect Dark, more or less confirmed that the ghost that killed me is possible, but only on 1.0 cartridges. My suggested way to perform the glitch is wrong, or may be wrong. All you need is a 1.0 version cartridge of Perfect Dark and play the challenge levels. Apparently, any of them could lead to a memory writing error, which can instigate an interaction with the ghost in a single player level. However, one challenge level specifically will completely crash your game. Anyone with an original 1.0 copy of the game can prove this to be true. The ghost is pretty much confirmed at this point, it's just a matter of being the first person to figure out which challenges right over the correct memory to trigger it. As an extension to all this, because we have proven that a memory overwrite exists in Perfect Art Challenges, it opens the door to some form of arbitrary code execution. And that last piece is huge, we haven't even considered it yet. Arbitrary code execution aside, being able to spawn a rogue enemy into solo levels could have an impact on speedrunning the game. 
Of course, if the ghost is so lethal that he kills you in one shot from seemingly nowhere, you'll never complete a mission. But you could at least speculate what if he was loaded in such a way that he was only on part of the level, and was shooting guards or characters and was a help to you. A few places this speculative ghost could be helpful would be places like eliminating Cassandra's guards on extraction, ridding the presidential clone on crash site, freeing the hostages on defense, maybe even fighting with the Skedar King on Skedar ruins. Can you imagine spawning into War Agent, where the only objective is to eliminate the Skellar King and completing the mission in one second because the ghost did it? Yeah, that definitely sounds like the makings of a childhood urban legend right there, but that's the kind of idea that could at least in theory be opened up if we can ever actually figure out what causes the ghost. And even beyond that, who knows what kind of memory stacking code execution is possible? Perhaps the ghost isn't the end of it. Just imagine if loading the challenges a certain way, or fiddling around with the combat sim settings, could lead to stuff like certain guards being removed from levels, or having access to weapons you usually wouldn't have. The possibilities could be endless, and eternally and irreversibly game-breaking. There's one more parting piece of evidence to consider before we wrap up. A video uploaded in August 2019 by Casey Mongillo on the infiltration stage. In it, he has on invisibility and invincibility, fires zero shots, yet this one guard clearly seems to get hit at some point by what appears to be a crossbow bolt. Might this be evidence of the ghost caught on tape? None of the guards die though, despite others getting hit hard enough to drop their weapons and wince in pain. Oh this lack of lethality seems at odds with most accounts of the ghost. This one commenter on the video, Paul McIntyre, seems convinced that this was actually your ally, Jonathan, shooting from his location all the way over here. The shot that hits these guards do seem more of the strength of Jonathan's shots, rather than the legendary one-shot-one-kill crossbow-wielding ghost. So, who really knows? And that's the story of the Chicago Ghost, a gaming urban legend that just seems to keep on giving. So with all that considered, do you believe in the Chicago Ghost? Is it a real thing that can actually happen in the game, or simply the exaggerated, wonderful imagination of younger minds, yesteryears, and the beauty of the early internet giving life to unsubstantiated rumors and heresy? I think you know where I stand on this by now, so I truly hope in time we will see irrefutable proof of its existence. I'm a firm believer, at least I want to believe. If you have any info, footage, or corroborating evidence of this, or any other gaming urban legend, feel free to leave a comment or send it my way. I hope you enjoyed diving into this story. Have a safe and comfy season, everyone. Stay true, and I'll see you in the next stream or video.